Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gomez Singh. Topping our newscast, 13 out of 15 senators will be away from the territory for a week to attend a national legislative summit that kicked off on Monday. Senate President Neville James spoke to News 2 about what is arguably their most important agenda at the summit, equal citizenship rights for United States citizens living in the Virgin Islands. News 2's April Knight has that story. Senate chambers will be empty this week as majority of the senators head off to Seattle for the 2015 National Convention of State Legislatures. This is like legislature, legislature college. About 1,200 legislators, um, state and territory. Attend. Senate President Neville James stated that their main agenda is pushing for equal citizenship rights for the U.S. Virgin Islands. I might live in America in an American possession, but I'm still American. I'm a Caribbean, but I'm still American. The ability to vote for president is a major issue for territories like the Virgin Islands, a fact that has drawn attention in national media, but has not yet translated to policy in Congress. Many Virgin Islanders want the ability to vote for the president and there's been some concern even from the president himself with respect to what rights those of us who live in the insular possessions have. But apart from voting rights, Virgin Islanders are also excluded from certain benefits and lack a definite geopolitical designation. Social Security, the supplemental program, um, we for whatever reason we don't, we don't, we're not eligible for that. We're looking to see if we can work with that and then we have a, a problem where for um, immigration purposes, we are considered domestic, but um, in other instances, we are considered international. According to Senate President James, their citizenship rights resolution will be discussed either Tuesday or Wednesday. The summit ends on Thursday, so constituents can expect their senators back at work on Monday, August 10th. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. We'll have more on our senators' agendas at the Legislative Summit. You can follow the summit's development by going on to www.ncsl.org. Amid concerns over the potential merger between Anthem and Cigna Insurance Companies, Lieutenant Governor Osbert Potter is assuring government employees that their health insurance policy is in force. The government's group health insurance contract is with Cigna, and that policy expires September 30th this year. Potter says the existing policy can't be changed before then. He says officials are currently in negotiations for the 2016 renewal, and there is the possibility that new rates could be slightly higher. Anthem struck a deal to buy Cigna, but it hasn't been finalized. Potter says he has sent two issues to both companies before the sale is approved. Despite attempts to help by the VI government, the territory's primary nursing home will close its doors. Officials from the Seaview Nursing Facility reached a settlement agreement with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services after the federal agency decertified the territory's sole privately owned nursing home. News News' Erica Parsons has some more. The residents of Seaview Nursing Home will have to be relocated after its owners agreed to close the doors. Last week, the owner of the territory's only privately owned nursing home, Dr. Alfred O'Heath, signed a settlement agreement with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. Seaview lost its certification on June 30th after CMS terminated its provider agreement because of a number of patient safety violations. Government officials had planned to step in after the announcement in June, initially talking about a possible takeover of the private facility. Now, however, they say they're in the process of trying to secure other long-term arrangements for the elderly residents. Local officials, including the acting attorney general and the human services commissioner, worked with CMS's attorney to draft the settlement agreement. In it, CVU officials agree to submit a notice to close, withdraw its appeal, fully cooperate with the VI government to transition patients to an alternate provider, give the nursing home residents adequate services until they're transferred, to open an escrow fund to receive the nursing home payments, and finally, to advise the senior residents that the government is working to find them a new home. CMS will continue to make payments for eligible seniors admitted before June 30th and up until either the nursing home residents are transferred or January 30th, whichever comes first. Erica Parsons, News 2. 
Calls to the Commissioner of Human Services for comment were not returned by news time. Governor Mapp has named a new acting fire marshal after the Senate's rejection of the previous nominee, Eugene Farrell. Captain Clifford Joseph has been with the fire service for over 20 years. He began his career as a firefighter, became a fire corporal in 2003, fire sergeant in 2005, fire lieutenant in 2009, and most recently, fire captain fire marshal in 2012. He's also certified and trained in areas like conflict resolution, national wildfire incident command, fire science, and a certified responder for weapons of mass destruction. Diane Prosper, who is the acting warden of the Golden Grove Adult Correctional Facility and Detention Center, announced the execution of a shakedown of the facility on Friday, July 31st. The operation was a collaborative effort, they say, of the Bureau of Corrections and the Virgin Islands Police Department toward reducing contraband and improving safety and security at the facility. Contraband uncovered included cell phones, cartons of cigarettes, screwdrivers, shanks, scissors, pocket knives, satellite speakers, cell phone chargers, headphones, marijuana and marijuana paraphernalia, also SIM cards, lighters, medication, cell phone batteries, and much, much more. Uh, now a drill bit, jewelry screws, and bandage clip, and count on two, we'll have some more on the shakedown. 29-year-old Bennett Augustin of Estate Upper Love died after an auto accident over the weekend on Sunday, August 2nd at 6.24 a.m. The 911 emergency call center received a report of the accident on Queen Mary Highway or Centerline Road in the vicinity of the Virgin Islands Waste Management Authority located in Estate Williams Delight. Preliminary information provided shows that the male victim was operating a black pickup truck when he apparently lost control of the vehicle, struck a tree, and the vehicle broke apart upon impact. EMTs examined the accident victim. No signs of life were found. Traffic Investigation Bureau are continuing to investigate. 41-year-old Tasha Forbes of Estate Anna's Retreat St. Thomas was arrested on Friday at 10 a.m. Officers say they met with the Economic Crime Unit. They executed an arrest warrant issued by the Magistrate Court of the Virgin Islands. Forbes was charged with forgery, grand larceny, and obtaining money under false pretense. Those charges stem from an incident that occurred in March of 2015 after Forbes forged the signatures of her victims on several checks and cashed them. Bail for Tasha Forbes was set at $10,000. On Saturday, August 1st, Christian J. Rojas, 25, of Lytton Fancy, was arrested. The owner of the Savan grocery store phoned the 911 emergency call center and reported to officers that one of the suspects who had robbed his business on Friday, June 19, 2015, and assaulted him, was standing outside of his business. Several officers responded. Rojas physically assaulted an officer and began to run away on foot. However, he was apprehended moments later in the alley near the Leonard Dober Elementary School. He was charged with first-degree robbery, third-degree assault, aggravated assault, and simple possession of a controlled substance. Bail was set at $100,000. Also on Saturday, August 1st at 3.50 p.m., Reuben George, 22 years of age of Belongo Bay, was arrested and charged with first-degree burglary, third-degree assault, grand larceny, destruction of property, disturbance of the peace, and use of a dangerous weapon during the commission of a crime. He was positively identified by a female victim as the man that broke into her room while she was present on Saturday, August 1st, armed with a machete and stole her money. Bail was set at $175,000. Also, police say on Saturday at roughly 4.24 p.m., officers responded to the call from the Schneider Hospital. The officers met with a 59-year-old male victim, male stabbing victim, who refused to cooperate with them. He stated that he did not want to reveal the name of the individual who stabbed him, not wanting the individual to be charged and incarcerated, and refused to give a statement. The victim was treated and released for a half-inch laceration to the left side of his chest under the breast area, which was not life-threatening. Keeping our eye on the economy, here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. As we can see, everything down. The Dow down 91, NASDAQ 12, S&P 500 also down at 5. Coming up on News 2, VI National Guard Adjutant General Ronaldo Rivera is presented with the 
Minuteman sculpture for outstanding support during a ceremony and retires. We'll have that. Welcome back. Tensions continue to heighten at the Haiti-Dominican Republic border as temporary camps are set up for immigrants of Haitian descent on both sides of the fence. One senator believes there is a lack of outcry both locally and abroad, and he hopes the Senate will join him in expressing a strong opinion against the human rights violations. News News April Night has more. As hostilities continue to escalate in the Dominican Republic's deportations of hundreds of thousands of immigrants of Haitian descent, one VI senator is pushing a resolution that would lay out the Senate's take on the international controversy. I was particularly interested and particularly outraged. Senator Trugenzi Roach has tried to get the resolution passed in the 30th legislature when he first heard about the DR Constitutional Court's decision on the immigration issue. Now, Senator Roach is reintroducing the resolution that would not only educate the public on the current crisis, but also make an appeal to movers and shakers in the international community. Appealing to the, the President of the United States, to the Congress of the United States, to the United Nations, to take steps that they uh, might be able to uh, with regard to ensuring that the human rights of persons in the uh, Dominican Republic are protected. According to Roach, Haiti's place in the history of freedom movements across the Americas should be reason enough to ensure that any human rights violations in the country don't go by unnoticed. Haiti participated in liberation movements, supported liberation movements throughout the Americas, supported freedom movements on behalf of people people who were not necessarily black, but Indian and oppressed in countries throughout this region. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. In other news, the VI National Guard said goodbye to its 12th Adjutant General Saturday. Major General Ronaldo Rivera officially retired on July 18th, and the Guard honored him during a retirement ceremony this weekend. News 2's Erica Parsons has that story. Major General Ronaldo Rivera addressed his troops for the last time Saturday morning. And before I leave this visit, I want to share everyone in your hands to say thank you. Thank you for your service. General Rivera got emotional as he told his soldiers he loved them and offered advice for the future. He retired July 18th. I wanted to make sure that they understand that this organization belongs to them. And don't leave for anything, because once you leave the Guard, it's very hard to get back in. They are very talented, they're very committed to the missions, and I'm, I'm saying to each one of them, thank you, and I love you. Rivera has been with the Guard for 35 years. He's been the territory's adjutant general for the last eight and a half years. He's very caring. Um, he takes his soldiers like his own. And I think he'd have done a wonderful job with the organization. He have made a lot of promotions and a lot of females right now you can see we are in top positions. The former adjutant general was honored for his service Saturday afternoon during a highly decorated retirement ceremony. Generals from around the nation attended and Rivera was presented with gifts and a number of military awards. He got emotional before he was presented with the United States flag. Colonel Deborah Howell was named as Rivera's replacement. As his final goodbye, General Rivera shook the hand of every single soldier and airman under his watch. For now, he says he's hanging up his hat for golf clubs, time to spend with his family, and a chance to sleep in. It used to be uh, quarter to seven, now it's going to be quarter to nine, so to start my day. Erica Parsons, News 2. In addition to local dignitaries, there were distinguished visitors for General Rivera's retirement ceremony. They included officials from the National Guard Bureau, Puerto Rico's Guard, including their Adjutant General, and the District of Columbia's Guard. International management, capital and management companies, summer interns were busy this past Tuesday during the Community Service Day initiative. This year, they serve the clients of the VI Association for Independent Living, which is a private, nonprofit organization 
that provides a range of services for persons with disabilities. They have the opportunity to be tourists for the day to include stops along Crown Bay, Brewers Bay, Mountaintop and Drake Seat and served as their new friends eyes and ears as well as assisting them to maneuver more easily at the various location stops. Well, speaking about vacation stops, looking for the perfect adrenaline, pumping, fun-filled, yet safe activity to bring out the inner daredevil in you? For family, friends, and children ages 8 and older, you can check out Tree Liming Extreme's Zip Lining Canopy Tour. The adventure lets you ride through the air in the safety of a harness while overlooking the breathtaking sceneries of the Virgin Islands. The tour allows you to glide through the tropical rainforests of St. Peter Mountain while viewing Megan's Bay, Jules Van Dyke, Tortola, and other keys. It's, locally, it's located directly across from the St. Peter Mountain Great House. Reservations are required. You can call 777-9477 for more information. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.